your story for the day? This one is called Sacking Out Shorty. So, there was this huge red painted brick house with barns and a pasture belonging to a farmer that Daddy knew. I must have been three or four. We went to visit this man and we walked down a line of sheds. In the first shed was a huge hog. He was pink and white. He had little ears and a little tail. And to a little girl like me, he was towering. In the next shed, curled up in the left-hand corner, showing teeth and a grimacing growl when the door was opened, a shaft of light entered showing a small red fox curled up in the corner with his tail on his nose. I asked Daddy, and he said it, that he had trapped it. Then there was the next shed. When we opened the door to that, on a wooden pole with a perch, glowing white in the shaft and light of the open door, was a fluffy feathered white owl. It seems like he turned his head all the way around and that he had huge eyes. But it was going around to the backyard with the huge pasture and the barn in back. On the right side was a paddock by a small barn. Standing in the corner, eyes and ears alert, nostrils quivering with curiosity, long bushy mane vibrating was a fat black pony with shapely short legs and looking into the enormous luminous black wet eyes with their long lashes i loved him and i wrapped my arms around his neck now being a child i wasn't aware of much but daddy and farmer fur were talking to each other intently over there Anyway, I was in school now on a normal day. Actually, it was April Fool's Day, incidentally, and of all things. A surprise happened. My Aunt Sharon, Daddy's sister, checked me out of school. We got to the farm, and instead of going down to the trailer in the woods, we stopped at Granny's old farmhouse. Daddy sits in his vehicle, and we pull up. Now, there are huge oak trees on either side of the road, and the yard is dirt, and Granny used to sweep it every day, but now she doesn't because she's dead. Um, in front of this oaks is, of course, the pasture. To the right of the gate is the concrete uh, watering trough. And standing at that gate, with his nostrils flaring, his mane blazing, his tail blowing, small shapely legs restless, stands the object of my love and fantasy. So I'm out of the car, I run to Daddy and the Black Pony. Daddy has a bucket of grain. He says to me, Shorty can count. And I believe Daddy, because Daddy shouts out, Count, Shorty. Shorty jerks his head, and he snorts through those nostrils, and he stamps his right foot righteously. Daddy, he can count, says I. Now, Shorty may or may not have been trained, but I was not trained to handle an equine. And on an early ride, Shorty put his head down and bucked me up and down all over that trail. And I was so proud of myself that I stayed on, but I think that I was told that I ruined the pony. To remedy this unfortunate circumstance, Daddy tied Shorty up really, really tight to a pine tree, and he took out a feed sack, and he brushed it all over that pony's body, his legs, his face, and Shorty's prancing, squawking, stomping, rearing, built up dust around his legs, and then when the sacking was finally over, Shorty was docile and still, and the entire circumference of that tree was laid bare of vegetation due to his gyrations. We later got two horses, a black mare named Midnight for me, and the stallion Appy for brother, and little sister was relegated to the poem, Shorty.